Flats in central locations are usually the best bet because the places you need the most are easy accessible. With a bus station and a supermarket nearby means you're never late or hungry. I get that benefit from my flat and I love the location but it's so plain. There's a thin line between simplicity and boring and this is boring. In my front room I've got plain walls for days like there, there and there and my bedroom is no different. I'm Caribbean and I want my flat to speak for me. I'm not going to buy fancy artwork or expensive furniture, I'm going to DIY this baby. But I'm definitely going to need some professional advice. I came across Wendy Newman and her tagline completely sold me. And I asked her to stop by my flat because I knew she was the lady for the job. Hi, my name's Wendy Newman, I'm an interior designer and I'm based in East Sussex. I work through Kent and Sussex um, and I do interior design advice for people, um, both domestic and commercial. So I work in people's homes or in their offices or workplaces um, and I go in and, um, and help them with interior design ideas. The thing that's really crying out to me in here is, is the blank wall. You've got several areas where there's a big wall of empty space. There's one here, one here and there's another one over above the fire. So, um, and this one is directly above the sofa, so this is kind of a focus um, of where people will be sitting. So it's trying out to have some colour, a bit of personality, a bit of life or something going on on this wall here. So I think we could talk about lots of different ideas of things that we could do to, to create something on there. Okay, Ashley, well, I mean, we're in your bedroom now and it is um, very similar in style to the living room. It is, it is absolute blank canvas, again, with magnolia walls, white ceiling, and plain neutral cast. It's a really good start in adding a little bit more personality in here by introducing some colour. Um, you've got the shocking pink of the curtains and um, following that through with your throw on the bed, um, which is a, is a fantastic, you know, bright colour. Um, and you've done really well to contrast that with a um, bright turquoise, which gives a really sort of tropical theme kind of thing going on. Um, what you have done, however, is you've got big, solid areas of the colour. Um, and so I think what you could really, really do within here is, is add a bit of some pattern. And I think there's lots of different ways that we could do that. So maybe we can go and talk about some ideas. So maybe we could um, look at the idea of getting some ca a canvas or maybe a series of canvases actually. Three would be really, really nice. Yeah. Three canvases in a row, it's what's called a triptych, always looks really effective um, because it's very gentle and easy on the eye to, pr to understand um, three things in a row. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we could look at the idea of getting three canvases and creating something on them. If you felt comfortable doing some painting or some drawing or some oils or whatever, or maybe you could um, do something a little bit more, you know, decoupage where your things are stuck on, cut out and stuck on, um, or you can even get things that are sort of melted on or melded on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's I all like sorts that. of ideas. You like that one? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking melting crayons. and melding crayons. Yes. Okay. What like wax crayons? Yes. Oh, they would be good. You could melt those. That would be that would be fantastic. So if you've got okay. you know access to a supply of wax crayons, you could you could stick those on the top of the canvas, yeah. um, and um, in the colours of a rainbow yeah. or, so like or a nice stripes or yeah. something like that yeah. it would look fantastic. Okay, melt good. them, and they would all melt down either with a hairdryer or a heat gun or something. Um, being health and safety conscious at all yeah. times. Uh, but maybe melt those so that the colours drip down the canvas, yeah. something like that would look fantastic. Yeah. And you could, over the course of the three, yeah. have a whole rainbow effect, um, including really good focus on your tropical colours that you've got here. So the deep purple, the deep pink, yes. and the deep turquoise. Um, make sure you've got a contrast to that, so, so maybe a bit of um, bright yellow or something yes. to lighten it all up, and that would just look fantastic. You were saying in my bedroom I need some patterns. What do you think? Pattern, absolutely. Um, the, a, a, a cheap fix um, to introduce some pattern in there would be something like you can get some amazing wall stickers these days. Yeah. Vinyl wall stickers, which are either you know um, like a um, a tree with some birds in it, or a, a really inspirational saying, or something like that. Vinyl wall stickers are brilliant for places like this because they just go on the wall and they come completely off, completely yes. clean when you go away again. Yeah. Um, but it it it's it's a it's a cheap way of covering a large expanse of wall. Um, but another option um, for something, um, introducing some pattern in there would be um, to get some patterned fabric. You could either stretch a piece of patterned fabric over a blank canvas just to create yeah. instant artwork, or you could go one step further and if you wanted to carry on being you know, a little bit more Creative. DIY and yeah. creative, 
Um, it's really easy to make um, a, a stool, which you could use as like a bedside table in there. I notice you haven't got a bedside table. So a stool that goes at the side of the bed or at the end of the bed, um, you can buy a really cheap ottoman. They're, they're easy to come by in junk shops. Uh, so it doesn't matter what um, the colour is uh, or the state of the fabric or the colour of the wood at the moment because the idea would be that you just get something that's the right size yes. and you completely change it. Wendy suggested that I could use artwork to brighten up my living room by adding it to the most focal point. Everything I use includes canvases, crayons, a heat gun, a glue gun, some nails and a hammer. The first thing I had to do was decide on how I wanted my colours to appear. I decided to have a gradient from dark to light simply because when I saw the wide array of colours, I really felt as though I needed to incorporate as many as possible. Once I was completely satisfied with my layout, I got my glue gun all warmed up and glued each crayon individually to my canvas. Next came the fun part, the melting. This part was really straightforward. All I did was concentrate the heat on the tips of the crayons and watch them melt. Be sure to only focus on the tips because you don't want to melt the glue that's holding the crayons to the canvas. The wax melted in a perfect yet beautiful way, which was exactly what I was going for. Uh, I'm Philippa Cheeseman, I am from Cheeseman Upholstery. We recover furniture, we make furniture from new, uh, we'll strip down, respring, refoam. We do traditional work and modern furniture as well. Because I know nothing about upholstering, I came to Philippa for some help and she demonstrated on an old seat. Like that, you pull it around yeah. and then you put one end down which will hold the stretch yeah. that you've got there. And the top one, you'll put a tack in to there. Yeah. And that's your first middle tack. Pull them both at the same time. You've got the grain on this, so you can see whether you're pulling it out of shape or not. For instance, yeah. doing something like that or that. So if you pull them both in the same place, everything stays stab uh, stable. Pull around like that. And in the middle again tack on either side. What we're going to do is we've got eight tacks that are going. We've done four already. Yeah. And now we're going to do another four which are going to go in the corners. Yeah. These eight tacks basically mould your fabric to the shape of the job and then everything else is a filler. So get these right and everything else will not be easy but will be easier. Yeah. So what you do next is something like this or your coffee table for instance. If you put pressure yeah. on there and then pull your corner around nice and tight, as tight as you can pull it. Put a tack in there. So we're going to push down, tie it around. Put a tack in there. And same again. Tack goes in the middle there. And then one more. And you're going to do that on the front, the back, and on the sides as well. So, what we do then is we'll start an inch away from the centre and we stay a good inch away from where we're holding. Yeah. So, we'll just put a couple of three staples in there, take the next one along out, and do the same thing again. Go to the next hack. Pull everything nice and tight at that angle and then carry on from where we finished off with our staples and the same again don't get anywhere closer than an inch to where you're pulling okay, so yeah. fold everything back so the principles it, principles exactly the same fold everything back flatten everything down so where it folds here if you come in about half an inch and then cut up to the tack so it's only going there, where it's folded there, cut.
come in about half an inch, cut up to that tack again. Cutting your actual staple gun. And that is what you should end up with. Oh, I like that. That's really, really neat. Okay. After that lesson, I was ready for my second DIY project. I got this coffee table for a bargain. It was £10 and I'm prepping it to turn it into a dressing table stool. To change the look of it, I'm spraying it white for a fresh, clean finish. To make it look like a dressing table stool, it's going to need some more height, so I'm cutting some foam to add it on top. I use lots of spray adhesive to keep all of my pieces of foam intact. And I added some more on my coffee table. And there, that's five more inches of height. Now that that's over, I placed my fabric on top. Philippa said that I'm gonna need to tack everything. And the hardest part for a first timer is pulling the fabric tightly and keeping a firm hold while trying to tack it all at the same time. And the struggle was real, believe me. I secured my tacks with staples, which was so painful for my hands, but I got it done. To finish everything off, I flattened the staples using a hammer and I cut off all the excess fabric. I added these upholstery nails as a finishing touch. Now every time I do my makeup, I get to sit on something that I created. And even though it's not perfect, it's such a good feeling. For more information on Wendy Newman, check her website www.wendynewmaninteriordesigns.co.uk and also wondersofdiy.com.